Hi guys, I'm Dr. Nash Jocic, bodybuilding champion and um, somebody who has been in the bodybuilding industry for over 40 years. I have trained and supervised over 3,000 clients and helped them to achieve fantastic uh, physique, uh, lose fat, develop big muscles, and I hope that my advice will also help you achieve your goals. Now, <clears throat> in this uh, video, I want to talk to uh, you about uh, uh, upper chest. So, um, the reason for that is that uh, overall chest development, obviously, is, is very important, especially if you want to have impressive chest and uh, eventually compete one day. So, uh, uh, what is the story about upper chest? I would like to debunk the uh, theory that actually there is no such a thing as upper chest and that you actually don't have to exercise anything for upper chest, especially inclined presses, because they are apparently a waste of time. But... Uh, before I get into that issue, uh, let's see what has happened historically. As you can see on these images, uh, uh, people like Arnold, for example, used to do uh, inclined press and develop tremendous chest. Uh, he was uh, inclined chest was always part of his chest routine. So there is absolutely no question about uh, inclined presses in Arnold's uh, chest routine. And as you can see, the results are tremendous. It's phenomenal. Just look at the upper section of his chest. I mean, this is something that uh, most of professional bodybuilders even now uh, are dreaming about. <clears throat> and uh, as I said, it, that, that would be impossible without inclusion of uh, inclined presses. Now, this Arnold is not the only one. <clears throat> uh, there are other uh, Mr. Olympias, like for example, Lee Haney, who performed that religiously inclined press in order to develop fantastic, full, well-round chest. And uh, Lee Haney achieved that. And again, uh, inclined presses, either dumbbell or machine presses, so uh, barbell presses were always uh, part of his chest routine. Again, you can see that in this picture especially how big his upper chest uh, are. And um, again, uh, simply you will never come across anybody who is something in bodybuilding who didn't, do upper chest uh, presses, inclined presses. So you see, this is Ronnie Coleman, for example, doing a, a heavy dumbbell chest inclined presses again for the same reason to maximally uh, develop uh, chest muscles, upper chest muscles. And again, you can see the upper chest literally popping out from the clavicular bone uh, thanks to these uh, inclined presses. And uh, the story continues. Every single one again who managed to do and achieve certain um, success is another Mr. Olympia, Phil Heat. You can see him doing here uh, incline uh, machine press again for his upper chest. And then you have uh, a <coughs> Jay Cutler as well doing uh, incline press with barbells. He was also doing dumbbells. There are different types of incline presses. They are all uh, all very effective. Uh, my favorite uh, incline press was always with dumbbells, as you can see on this photo. Uh, although I did uh, in the past uh, barbell incline presses, but the dumbbell incline presses were somehow better for my uh, build. Um, I uh, always included incline presses in uh, my chest routine, and I have also managed to develop uh, substantially my upper chest thanks to thanks to this. Uh, inclined presses. Now, um, one of the recent misinformation introduced by few new bodybuilding gurus, as you know, they are popping out uh, almost every year from somewhere, discovered some miracle system or whatever. And uh, some of them are were simply calling nonsense uh, performing any type of inclined presses for the reason, apparently, according to them, uh, because the chest, uh, the plane of the chest uh, uh, muscle, chest uh, movements is uh, only when you perform horizontal press, which is uh, around 45 degrees while you're lying down on a, on a flat bench, or decline presses, which are, going to, which are under the angle of 45 degrees in a decline position. Apart from that range of motion, if you go, according to them, uh, in incline position, 
you will uh, simply be leaving that plane of motion on, of major pectoralis muscle, apparently. Um, they even said that, uh, oh, you don't have to look at the professional bodybuilders, they grow because of hormones that they take and steroids, etc. But uh, it doesn't mean that even if Arnold did incline press, that Arnold was right, and then everybody has to follow. Well, as I, as I showed you, it wasn't just Arnold, it was everybody, every single one who had achieved anything in bodybuilding has done uh, inclined presses. So um, um, the, the, the issue that uh, I have here is um, simply, uh, is simply uh, uh, knowledge with, uh, basic knowledge of anatomy. So uh, <clears throat> as you can see on the photos, uh, it is true, as they said, that major pectoralis is one muscle, uh, but this is not the whole story. Although major pectoralis is uh, one muscle, it's made of two sections. As you can see again on these photos, the uh, upper section is called the clavicula major pectoralis, while the uh, midsection, the, the major part, the, the bulk of a major pectoralis muscle is called sternocostal major pectoralis. Now, what is the difference between two, these two? Although both of these two sections, so um, <clears throat> uh, clavicular major pectoralis and sternocostal major pectoralis, they merge into, the, their point of insertion is in the top of the humerus. Their origin is not the same. So while... Um, as you, again, can see on the photos, while uh, uh, sternocostal major pectoralis has origin in sternum, in the chest bone, uh, clavicular major pectoralis has origin in the clavicle, in the collarbone. And uh, that that is uh, 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 clearly visible on this photo of, uh, of mine. You can see how how these two sections are separated by the direction of muscle fibers. So uh, sternocostal section, you can see how those bundles of muscle fibers are horizontal, while the bundles of muscle fiber, as you can see on, on my photo there, are angled. And they are angled exactly that angle that you should keep the, the incline bench, bench uh, at, which is uh, between 30 and 45 degrees. So now, if you extend in the horizontal position, if you keep moving and keep that trajectory in that plane, you will clearly be fully stretching the uh, bundles of muscle fibers, these uh, sections of major uh, uh, of sterno sternocostal major pectoralis fully, but that would not stretch uh, this uh, section, as you can see, of the, of the bundles of muscle fibers which are angled. So... Uh, <clears throat> the problem is that if you want to fully stretch clavicular uh, major pectoralis, clavicular section, you cannot stretch it the same way as you're stretching your sternocostal section, but you need to stretch that doing in inclined position as the direction of bundles of muscle fibers is clearly pointing out. This is so obvious from this picture that I don't think there is any other uh, commentary needed on this subject. So these two, although they are the same muscle, they have the same point of insertion on the on the top top of the humerus, uh, uh, upper arm bone. Their point of origin is very different, and this is what is causing actually uh, necessity of performing inclined presses or inclined flies or inclined machines, dumbbells, whatever. Uh, uh, on an angle of 30 to 45 degrees. Now, a uh, clavicular portion of major pectoralis makes up to 20% of major pectoralis muscle. So if you're not interested in that 20%, fine, don't do inclined presses. You will never develop that section it, it, if it doesn't matter to you. But if you're all around full chest development, you have to pay attention to those 20% uh, as well. Uh, I think I have clarified this uh, for you. Uh, another thing I want to say is that uh, this exercise can be performed with barbells, with Smith machines, 
Uh, it can be performed with uh, uh, inclined uh, chest press machines. There are also flying movements that you can do, either with cables or with dumbbells. Uh, sometimes people would start, some people would start with inclined presses, people who actually lack that development, they would give a priority. So they would be the first exercise in, in many, many cases. Many professional bodybuilders actually start their chest workouts with inclined presses. I believe because it's 20% of the whole section that one exercise uh, will be enough. So if you do, let's say, four or five exercises for chest, one press for chest, either first or second, depending on your priority will be enough but if you really want to put a little bit more uh, emphasis on upper chest maybe you can add another exercise maybe like uh, uh, incline uh, dumbbell flies or incline cable flies or something like that so uh, <coughs> I uh, I hope that we have debunked this myth of uh, a non-existing upper chest uh, don't worry about incline no as I explained to you uh, this is anatomical misunderstanding or lack of knowledge, whatever you like. And uh, anatomy is one that actually directs our our uh, engagement and our actions. So uh, if you ignore anatomy, then forget about all this. But if you are a rational individual, then you will probably follow not just logic, but also what uh, most all actually top bodybuilders have been doing ever since 70s, uh, including the all top bodybuilders now. Now, for those of you who are interested more in detail about uh, uh, training system, training techniques, I have uh, published uh, seven ebooks that you can find on my on my uh, website nashfittraining.com. And these are books uh, like, uh, for example, weight training, uh, in which I explain in detail about um, basics of anatomy, physiology. I give the selection of best exercises, training systems, training techniques. Uh, if you are a competitive bodybuilder or, or more advanced, there is another book that I've written, which is called Build Muscle, Burn Fat. Uh, that uh, book is uh, obviously explaining a little bit more about uh, more advanced training techniques and training systems, which will benefit people who are more advanced. I have also written books on nutrition. And if you want to know everything about you know our evolution, and uh, what was the food that people have eaten and how has our digestive system developed, and not just the digestive system, but the, all other internal organs, depending on food that we had around around us in a, in a period of uh, 300,000 years. Uh, you should read this book. This, this is the fundamentals of, uh, of nutrition. And uh, once you understand that, it will be much easier to manipulate your macros and uh, choose what is the best diet for you. Uh, another another uh, book which is very detailed uh, regarding the nutrition for people who are very, very serious about training and also competitive uh, athletes, competitive bodybuilders, is this book called Feed the Muscle, Not the Fat. Very detailed explanation with a few examples of, uh, of diet that will help you optimize your muscle hypertrophy, but at the same time, lose body fat. There are other books there as well for you. And uh, if you're interested, again, please uh, visit my website, nashfitraining.com. Also, uh, on that uh, on my website, you can find other services that I provide, like telephone consultations, um, personalized training programs, personalized nutritional programs, personal training online, and uh, lucky ones who live in London, also personal training one-to-one. -one. Uh, once again, thank you uh, very much for tuning in. And if you would like to uh, support this channel, uh, please join our members page in which I offer lots of benefits. And uh, also, if you like this video, please subscribe and uh, send me your comments because they're very important for engaging and developing our community. So thank you very much again. And uh, I hope to see you soon in my next video.